So we've spent the first couple of videos in this module looking at how to use these blocks in the blue motion menu to move the cat around on the screen. And so we've looked at absolute motion and relative motion, and we've given you some of the details on how to move things. And so at the moment, we've got a really simple program where when I say green flag places everybody, we reset the cat to the middle of the stage pointing to the right, like he is right now. And then after one second, we say action, and we move 50 paces, turn 45 degrees, and move up 150 more paces. And so we can see that happen. Right? There he moves there, and now if I say, hey, places everybody and action, he moves. Well, I want to return to this idea that I had before about the fact that I said that when I do these three blocks down here, right, when I say move 50 steps, I told you before that this happens in its entirely. It moves 50 steps. Then I turn 45, and then when it's done, I move 150. But yet when we sort of look at this, it sort of looks like it all happens at once, right? We don't really see much differentiation between there. It's because it happens really fast. Uh, about the only way that you know that these aren't all happening at the same time is because we do see the separation between places everybody and the action, that this one second wait is there. But suppose I wanted to, to, to actually see this in a little more detail. And so that's where we get to this idea of Scratch as Logo. You remember I said that when, when Papert was working with, with Logo, uh, one of the things he worked with were these graphical turtles that left trails as they went. And you could see where they've been. And by giving commands, you could actually create shapes in the trails that they'd left. Well, we want to do the same thing here with our cat. We want to have the ability for the cat to uh, move around on the stage and leave a line as he goes. Okay? And we do that through objects or through, through commands in the pen menu. The way I want you to think about this, this cat is that the cat is holding a marker. You can't see it in his hand there, but the cat is holding a marker. And by default, the marker is up in the air. But one of the things that you can do is to, to put the pen down so that it's dragging on the floor as he walks, and then lift it up. And so we can, we can, we can do both of these actions uh, and, and leave a, a marker trail as we go. And so what I'm going to do right now is to say, look, when I say places everybody, I want you to go to the middle of the stage and turn to the right and wait. And then right before you start moving, right, right after you're done waiting, right before you start moving, I want you to put the pen down. Okay, so just a few minutes ago, I told you the things you're most likely to use are at the top. Notice this wasn't at the very top. It's the third one. But I'm going to put the pen down. And now as I do this motion, we're going to see a trail. So let's do this. Places everybody and action. There we go, right? We see that he jumped to the middle of the stage. He reset. I put the pen down. He moved forward 50 pixels. He rotated 45 degrees away from where he was before. And then he turned another, uh, or then he went forward another 150 pixels. And the whole time, he's leaving a marker trail as he goes. And so now if we rerun the, oh wait, that doesn't look right. What just happened? We got another line there. What, what, what? OK, here's where you have to remember a little bit about how Scratch works. Scratch always starts up from wherever you left off. And so just like when I hit Run, I had to send him back to the beginning because he might not be there. You know, when, when this program ends, I put the pen down. And, and so the pen is down on, on the marker, down on the page. So when I sent the cat back to 00, zero he left a trail in there. So I need to do two things. First of all, obviously, I want to lift the pen up, right? So that when, I, when he jumps back to this starting point, the pen isn't down and he doesn't make that line. Because I don't want the triangle. I just want this little trace of where he was and what he's doing. Second thing, though, is that right now there's stuff there. And so I need to erase the screen. And so the other thing that I'm going to add into here is a clear command. Uh, most of you will get this reference. Most of your students will as well. But uh, some might miss this. I want you to think about this like a giant Etch-a-Sketch. Right? The idea here is that when I hit the green flag and say, start this program, I want you to shake the daylights out of that Etch-a-Sketch. I want you to erase the, the, the stage and start with a, with a clear slate. And so you can see that right now. Right? It's going to go by quickly, but we're going to press the green flag. We cleared. We lifted the pen up. We jumped to the middle. We waited one second. We put the pen down, and we moved. And in fact, maybe what we want to do is just put uh, a little bit of, a, of a, another weight in there just so you can see that happening. Right? Notice what happens. We clear and take the pen up. We jump to the middle, and then we draw. 
Right? And so truthfully, whenever I'm working with a uh, pen at all, whenever I'm using Scratch's logo, I think about this as being part of places, everybody, right? When I say places, everybody, I want you to start the scene over from all the way at the beginning. And that means not only moving to the, the outside of the, of the stage, right, Go, or the middle of the stage, but it also means erasing anything I made the last time we practiced the scene and then, you know, lifting the pen up so I don't, don't break it. Of course, we could have just, in theory, we could cheat a little bit. We could just make the clear happen later, right? We don't have to ever put the pen down again. We could just say, jump to that point and then clear, right? So jump and then clear. And then even though it might have made the line as it jumped, he cleared right after that. Uh, I actually always kind of like this idea, though, of being very explicit. Lift the pen up, put the pen down, and you can get shapes like you're trying to get. In this lesson, we began to look at the first couple of blocks from the green pen menu. I mentioned earlier that we can use the pen menu to use Scratch like the turtle graphics portion of Logo. Before you move on to the next lesson, I'd actually like you to take just a few minutes to think about some ways that you might be able to combine the blue movement that we looked at in the earlier lessons and the green pen control that we learned about in this lesson to do something creative with your students. How could you choose to combine those two to ask your students to do something meaningful in the class that you teach?